Good evening, spaceflight enthusiasts and angry advocates around the world. I have another update for you with Starliner and a whole lot of the same thing. Well, except for one big exception. But first of all, we need to talk about what hasn't changed, and that is the fact that the astronauts are still stranded on the ISS. They're trying to reproduce the problems that they've been having with the thrusters on the ground to determine what might be causing the problems with them, but there's something a lot more significant that they're going to do besides that. They intend to conduct a hot fire while the Starliner is still docked to the ISS. Let me say that again. They are going to conduct a hot fire with a spacecraft that has malfunctioning thrusters while it is still docked to the International Space Station. All of this and more coming at you on The Angry Astronaut right now. Good evening, and once again, welcome to the latest angry bulletin regarding Boeing Starliner. I'd like you to keep in mind that I intend to cover the first of several tests of RFA-1 here in Shetland live tomorrow. I have a few technical things that I need to get over in order to make all of that happen, but keep your eyes open and make sure to hit those notification bells. In the meantime, this whole debacle with Starliner continues to just get worse and worse. The astronauts are still stranded on the International Space Station. There is no current plan to try to rescue them, and any rescue plan would be difficult to implement anyway, because even though Falcon 9 is officially returning to service, only to carry things like Starlink satellites. There is no way that NASA is going to greenlight Falcon 9 to carry human-rated spacecraft. Now, of course, in theory, an unmanned crew dragon could be sent up on a Falcon 9 that might be malfunctioning in order to retrieve the astronauts, but I don't see NASA setting up a rescue mission with a rocket that has not been fully investigated after an anomaly. As near as I can tell, at least for the foreseeable future, Butch and Sunni are stuck up there. Unless, of course, the Russians decide to offer them a ride back to Earth, which is highly unlikely. So, in the meantime, Boeing has been extensively testing these problematic thrusters, and that's putting it very, very politely that continue to malfunction continuously on the Starliner, in spite of the fact that two years have elapsed since the last flight where there were were also thruster problems. And interestingly enough, after quite a lot of tests that actually put the engine through their paces, simulating the rigors of what they've already been through, degradation has been noticed in the seals and the other components of the thrusters. They've been able essentially to reproduce what has happened to these thrusters in orbit down here on Earth at White Sands Test Facility. Now, of course, the question that immediately comes to mind is over the last couple of years, why did Boeing not test these thrusters to the same degree to see whether or not that kind of degradation would occur? Why didn't they put these thrusters through their paces before they sent astronauts up on this damn spacecraft? And it gets even worse than that. The helium leaks have also been identified. Again, they can reproduce the sorts of degradation that they've currently been experiencing in orbit, so they seem to understand what's going on. But of course, again, it begs the question, why was none of this found on the front end, given how many problems existed with helium leaks and thruster performance in the previous unmanned mission? And finally, before they're going to feel comfortable enough to send the astronauts back to Earth with this spacecraft, once again, with thrusters that have experienced degradation already, and you're going to need really good thruster performance in order to re-enter properly, but they're still talking about taking a risk with this, but they're going to increase the risk by doing a hot fire test of Starliner while it's docked to the International Space Station. 
Now, to be fair, the odds of something cataclysmic happening are pretty remote, but nevertheless, I think I would be really hesitant if I were NASA to allow a spacecraft that has problems with its thrusters, especially if we're talking about seals and stuff like that, what if there are coolant issues as well and the engines rapidly overheat and then we have an RUD similar to what we had with the Falcon 9 Merlin engine on the second stage with that particular anomaly. Of course, the big difference is this anomaly would take place while the spacecraft was docked to the International Space Station, something I think that none of us want to see happen. I can't honestly believe that they're taking this risk. <sighs> As I've said a number of times before, I have been really hoping that I'll never have to report on this spacecraft again, and the only way to make that happen is to decommission it. Let's just go ahead and dump this program. Let's forget about Starliner. It's dangerous. It will always be dangerous. It's never going to be a viable alternative to Crew Dragon. Let's move on and get a human-rated Dream Chaser. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and check the description for various ways to support this content. And as always, stay angry about space.